What did Casey have dropped off this time? It's a good thing we charge for unboxing. You guys got any of them Jeep mods? Hey! <laughs> I don't know why you need this. You've never actually went real wheeling with that We're thing, going to so. Moab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be driving so Moab. slow with people. I'm sorry to say, no, won't get hurt. Well, you know, at least I'm driving my Jeep. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Casey, and uh, we're having a shop day here at Epic Adventure Outfitters. We are getting the Wrangler ready for Easter Jeep Safari. We're heading down to Moab in one week. And uh, you can see there's no roof rack on here. There's no rooftop tent on here. We took it all off. We've lightened the Jeep. We're going to go do some rock crawling. And uh, well, as part of that, we're going to uh, add a few upgrades to uh, convert the Overland Jeep into more of a rock crawler Jeep. So let's go inside and I'll show you just everything we've got. The guys here at Epic already unpacked everything for us. I think they want to get me out of here soon. And uh, Sean's here from the story till now. He's got the Bronco. Look at this thing. This thing is looking like it's ready to go on some major adventures. He's got the rooftop tent, the uh, water tank, the awning on there now. This thing looks like it's ready to roll. What, the Bronco? Yeah. No, just a Tim Look, Hortons. Looking just a Tim Hortons. <laughs> well, he's not Starbucks, right? But you got the water tank on here now. Got yeah. the awning. Dude, this thing's dope. The water tank? It's pressurized. So you just hook your air compressor up to it. Yeah. And then you've got pressurized water. Wow. Isn't that nuts? That's slick. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> See? I was expecting that. <laughs> it's pressurized. <laughs> so it just stays pressurized. And I like rinsed down the whole Bronco and still had pressure. So now you can just wash your truck I anywhere? I just wash my truck anywhere. <laughs> How much water is in there? Uh, that much. That much? I don't know. <laughs> it's a very precise amount. I, did, I didn't really pay <laughs> looks, attention looks to the numbers. Maybe, <laughs> maybe five gallons? I don't know. That's... I'm thinking about maybe swapping it to the back when moving the tent forward. Yeah, I would put it on the back personally. It would just be more useful, especially when you're, if you're back here, like cooking and stuff. All right, let's have a look at what we've unpacked uh, for the Jeep. Well, our friends at Metal Cloak sent us up a whole skid plate system for the Eco Diesel. Uh, we've got all the underbelly. Uh, so we've got all the underbelly skid plate system, as well as the skid plate to cover up the uh, diesel exhaust fluid container in the back, which is a low point in the back of the Jeep. So we're gonna be putting that on. And then the other thing we wanted to add are some sliders. So we've got, we've got the sliders that bolt right on. These are gonna replace the Rubicon sliders. And then they have these cool flip steps that go with them that are reversible. So we can have them either hanging down on an angle or we can have them flat out. And this is gonna be great for uh, people getting in and out of the Jeep, my wife, my daughter and as well as it's going to give us uh, some extra rocker protection when we're on the rocks uh, and off-roading in Moab at East Jeep Safari and then uh, we're finally going to replace our missing inner fender liner uh, in the back so we've got one for both sides in the rear we're gonna put a couple fender liners in that's the goal for today so we're gonna have to bring the Jeep in here in a few minutes gonna probably gonna get some of this stuff out of the way but uh, we're going to get all this loaded up, installed. Lennon's going to let us take the 4xe out for a rip today. Sean's here with the Bronco, and uh, I think he's got something special being delivered. So we're going to uh, keep an eye out for that. It should be here shortly. Just an awesome, fun day here that we're going to be having at Epic Adventure Outfitters, my home away from home. So I'm going to go find my coffee and continue drinking that. Brought to you by Epic Adventure Outfitters. All right, so part of what we want to protect, this is the uh, diesel exhaust fluid tank here, which uh, is notorious for getting hit if you're dropping off rock ledges. And we're going to protect the whole underside of the Jeep. And uh, so the diesel's fuel uh, tank is actually on the driver's side, if you didn't know that. Uh, most, and all, I think all the gas models are over here. So we've got all our fun emissions equipment. And we've had it replaced once already under warranty. We're going to cover all that up with skid plates and uh, as well up front here with the transmission and the engine. Everything's going to get skid plated and uh, I don't want to hit my head. And then along the sides, we're going to add those uh, rocker rails and side steps. So everything's bolt on. We don't need to uh, put anything into the body. We're just going to remove what's on here. And then uh, we've got the fender liners. Uh, we finally are going to replace uh, the rear fenders, you know, we ripped this rear fender off and uh, with it we damaged the liner. So 
We got a couple new liners to go in the back for Metal Cloak and uh, that'll look awesome. Okay, so someone was asking in the comments about Gorilla Glass because, well, anybody who watches my videos knows we have a Windows basically destroyed. Of course, yep. So uh, you, you got the Gorilla Glass. Yeah, so this is the Gorilla Glass. I've had this Jeep for just over a week, <laughs> uh, a week to the day in the HOV lane. Got a nice uh, stone chip. Didn't see it, came out of nowhere, um, and it looks and it sounded like it got shot. Yeah, that's so how you, mine... If you get in there real close, yeah. you can see it looks, so, like, it looks like a crater. Really didn't seem like it did uh, any did you any good with the Gorilla Glass. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure uh, why they call it Gorilla Glass. It's, uh, <laughs> chimp Glass. It should be called Chimp Glass. <laughs> I've heard good things about the film, the window film you can put on. The tearaway film? Yeah. So I was thinking of maybe, because I'm getting the window replaced actually on Tuesday mm -hmm. um, before we head to Moab, and I was thinking about getting the film put on there. So. <laughs> what on earth is this thing? What's going on? What do you got? Trailers? Trailer. Trailer life? Yeah. Who's Corey? Corey Denny. Denny. Casey? Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Corey. So this is your expedition trailer, right? Eh? Yes. Sweet. Look at this thing. So Sean, you're taking this to Moab? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, this is my station wagon. Yeah, it's a little dirty. We tried to find a car wash to wash it, but uh, <laughs> failed at that attempt. Well, is, I think Landon's good at washing stuff, so yeah. yeah Landon, Landon do detailing? Yeah, you can come out here and hit Landon! The <laughs> Bring the hose! Wait, you might have to dodge a wrench on your way in. <laughs> Feel like you're being watched? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Just checking. Somebody's always watching. There's always some creeper. With a camera. Is this straight bolt on? Do we gotta nope. drill anything? Uh, no rib nuts though, right? No nut certs, none of that crazy stuff. So, Metal Cloak and in their infinite wisdom doesn't have any instructions online for four doors for the two things you got. Really? Yeah. Yet. Yet. It was a nice Yet. It's coming, coming soon. soon. There's two door ones. <laughs> well, this is like a two door, it's just got extra doors. Yeah, no. <laughs> Realistically, it's fairly straightforward, but you do have to drill out factory holes, drill a couple new holes, paint them, mount it, and then you're on to the next part. Okay, so it's so not, not crazy. It's not the end of the world, there's no nut surf. No nut surf. Thank you, Metal Cloak. So if you don't have Rubicon sliders, you might have to add extra holes? No, the no, holes are always they're there. They're already there? Okay. They're the same holes they use for the step, for the slider, or if you have nothing, they're still there. All right, But cool. you still have to modify them and add more holes. I love drilling holes in the Jeep. Yeah, that's kind of what we do here. <laughs> so we have to put this initial piece on first before the uh, steps go on, because this stays on all the time. You can actually take the flip steps off and just have this protecting. And uh, I'll show you guys when this is on, just how it protects a little bit better than the Rubicon step. Okay. We're trying to decide do we want to start with these in the up position or the down position? Because they drop down like, oh, it's noisy in here. They drop down like this, so they're lower on the Jeep, but they offer a better step up. I think we should just do one on each side. Well, one, one on each side differently. We're gonna mount the lower one on the one on the other side lower because that's where your kids and wife gets for in. The girls, yeah. And we're gonna put this one <laughs> upper because you like so, to jump. So we just gotta put the tall rocks on the driver's side and avoid any tall exactly. rocks. Exactly. Wow. So if case, worst case, sometimes you're gonna have to back down the trail <laughs> or back up the trail. So up, we're gonna mount them up. Yeah, we're gonna mount them. Yeah, we'll mount them up. Yep. That'll give us more clearance for Moab and then yeah. his and her step package. <laughs> What's the matter? Is your low rider too low? Yeah. <laughs> low rider's too low. <laughs> Gotta get a lift on this Bronco, man. Working on it. Yeah. Had to adjust the uh, the wheel. Got it. Right. Oh, okay. Because it was set for a higher vehicle. Ah, uh, yeah. So the Bronco's still waiting for a lift. It's gonna get brought up a couple inches. Sean, what are you putting on here for tires? Uh, the same ones on the Gladiator, 37 inch Toyo Open Country MTs. Still see some 37s on here. That'll look good. How's How's doing? Doing? <laughs> Sliders attached, and uh, now Jeep's got to go up a little higher because we've got to get the uh, got to get the skid plates on the bottom. There's all your 67s design stuff. We need some. 67's design, <laughs> like deer in the headlights. <laughs> 67 designs, what do we need? So uh, we're gonna need a few things. So in case you guys didn't know, I know a lot, of, a lot of you guys in Canada watching these videos like to order 67 design stuff. 
Uh, Epic is the Canadian reseller for that. So if you don't want to pay all this extra shipping and brokerage and all that stuff, uh, and you're not in the States. We got it all figured out. <laughs> go check out epic-4wd.com for all your 67 design stuff. And I'm gonna go through and find a couple things. We need to uh, get some cameras mounted inside the Jeep. I wanna get a couple uh, new GoPro mounts. So we're gonna get a few carbon fiber arms and the little balls that mount into my rails. Get that added into the Jeep once it's not 10 feet in the air. Look at all this stuff, Paul. What do we need? Uh, one of these, these. Some Need a couple of these. Of these. Give me of like these. all these arms. Of those. Yeah, look at the arms. There we go. That's good. Perfect. Yeah. We're gonna, just gonna build like a big, We're gonna build a huge monster. articulated arm thing. <laughs> 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 all right, what's going on first, Ginger? We're gonna put the death tank on first, which seems irrelevant for the future, but hey, well, we, we may or may not delete it. I don't know. It just came available. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, what do you guys? What do you guys think? Um, should we delete all the emissions and death tank oh, off of the eco diesel? I know this is highly illegal down in the States and uh, some of you guys may or may not be doing it. Uh, up in Canada, it's a little bit more of a gray area. Uh, most people seem to get away with it as long as you're not excessively rolling coal and blowing black smoke out of your Jeep. Um, probably be okay. I've been kind of contemplating, do we keep this long term and start doing some long lasting mods, voiding some more warranty? Or do we just leave the emissions in place? And uh, I don't know, I don't know what the next phase will be for the channel for jeeps but kind of got some decisions to make but just in the last couple of weeks uh there's a full delete kit available for this um let me know what do you guys think if any of you guys have experienced deleting diesel vehicles removing emission systems i'd love to hear from you love to know i've never done anything like that this is my first diesel vehicle so not sure but anyways we're gonna put a skid plate on the back and protect it from rocks and getting smashed down in moab at egs Bolting up the uh, emissions piece here, cover the expensive diesel emission system under the Jeep. We don't want to damage that on any rocks and there's a lot of low hanging bits and pieces. There is. But look at this hardware. So this is what to prevent this from uh, snagging and getting mangled on rocks. We got a little uh, protector here for the bolts. And this is all so boat sided. Covers from the bottom up the side to the frame okay. to reduce so snagging as much as possible. So what do you think, Ginger? I'm not trying to do a lot of thinking today. It's Saturday. Just turn wrenches. It's a rest day. <laughs> I'm not going to pull out wrenches. That takes manual labor. I for power tools. <laughs> so this video has a little bit of a story behind it. Um, John and I spent all afternoon last weekend pulling off the roof rack and the rooftop 10. I was gonna show you guys just how easy it is to take off. Well, I just happened to delete my memory cards this morning before I left to Epic and totally forgot. All the footage was on there. We're gonna flip back. I'm gonna show you some stuff at the house. Oh, I'll just walk you through a little bit while these guys are working on the Jeep. I'll walk you through just how easy it was to take off the adventure rack. I'll show you my super sketchy rooftop tent storage system. And I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna be sleeping in on my way down and way back from Moab because we don't have a rooftop tent. We only have a place to stay when we're at Moab. So we gotta do some camping on the way down and on the way back because it's a 20, I think it's 24 hour drive or something like that, 20 or 24 hour drive. So we're gonna be camping and I'm gonna be trying out a swag from Crash Pad. I don't see a lot of people using swags up here in Canada or even in the United States. Just trying to find new new ways to do things, new products to show you guys. I think you'd be interested in this. And just like that, we're back in the garage. So I've just kind of got stuff stored here off to the side of the house. You know, I didn't even disassemble the crossbars. These are the crossbars that we hold the rooftop tent on with. Oh, I'm getting rain all down my neck. We just left it completely attached to the rail. So these are the rails that go front to back on the Jeep and we've got the crossbars on here and this is the front hoop the front hoop i wasn't sure how that was going to go for removing it honestly it was super easy because there's just four bolts once you have the rails disconnected from the top of this there's a bolt right you better look at this giant cement block out of the way there's uh two bolts here and two bolts here those go right here so we remove the one light uh pod here and then around the back there's two bolts and then you guys can see right in there that's the two bolts that hold that on so so really easy to get that front hoop off 
Um, that does cut down on the wind noise as well. That's the main source of wind noise on this rack is the front hoop. Look at this. This is the other main rail that we had on there. And we've still got the awning connected to it. Didn't even take the awning off. We just pulled the whole rail, awning mount and awning off all at once. And then the rear hoop, this is what I was telling you with the rear hoop, is just the one bolt that goes straight through here, bolts into there. There's not even a nut that's welded onto here, it's just all threaded. And you just pull that bolt off and off comes the rear hoop. Super easy to deconstruct the uh, adventure rack. And then we've got the rooftop tent up here. Stored the, obviously the Jeep is done. We're back from Epic, but we're gonna go back from Epic and I'll show you more of the Jeep. But just stored my tent up here. We got from Modular Racks. You wanna go check them out if you're in Canada. They're the supplier for these tents and you pick one up. Otherwise you can get them directly from roof nest down in the States. But this is my uh, safety second, super sketchy rooftop tent holder. But we just push this out onto the rack. We pull the Jeep right up here and just slide the tent right onto the rack. We're gonna get back to Epic, finish this off. I'll show you. It's kind of a fragmented video, but that's what happens when you uh, accidentally delete all of your footage. So let me show you just what we're gonna be sleeping in on the way down and on the way back from Moab because obviously with the rooftop tent here, uh, we can't sleep in it and we've got no racks, we've got no rooftop tent. Okay, real quick though, before we get back to the shop, I wanted to talk about one more quick thing that we're gonna be testing out on our trip to Moab. And this here, is a new power setup for us. So we've been using the Jackery 1000 for, yeah, I don't know, like a year and a half, almost two years now, but this is the EcoFlow Delta Max 2000. So this is gonna be uh, running in the Jeep. It's got a 2000 watt hour battery in it, as well a 2000 watt inverter. We're gonna be testing this out. I've got it hooked up in here. It's got AC on the back but I've got an extension cord that runs out to the front, which is uh, gonna allow us a bit more access. The fridge, we've got plugged in to the back of it. It's got a 12 volt receptacle on the back. Then it's got all these awesome high wattage USB ports on, on here. So we're gonna use this to charge all our drone batteries. It's gonna run our espresso machine. I may, I'm thinking maybe we even try like an induction cooktop on this thing, because those are under 2000 watts. Maybe we don't need to bring gas and propane, but it was just a real quick look. This thing fits perfectly in between the tie downs and I just ratchet strapped it in. It doesn't move at all. And uh, we're gonna be trying that out. Do you guys want me to do like a full walk around video of the EcoFlow power system? Let me know. There's so many power systems coming out on the market these days. It's kind of cool to see which ones do what better than others and what this one will do. And you know how we like to uh, make our espresso with the Nespresso machine. And uh, I got a few other ideas now that we can go up to 2000 watts on the inverter. I've really been wanting to try out a swag since I saw Paul and Christian using them. Um, I've wanted to get some experience and these don't really seem to be super popular in North America. They're, they're hugely popular over in Australia. Um, I see lots of the Overland crew using those and that's actually where crash pad comes from. So this is, um, this is the crash pad swag. And this is the one single person. They make a couple different variations. Close the door. They make a couple different variations. I'll put a link to this one down in the description. But uh, this is the single person. They make a hybrid, which is like a 1.5 person. It's a little longer, but it's a little bigger. And then they make a two person. So this is the single person, as compact as it gets. And if you're not familiar with Swags, well, I'm gonna set this up and I'll show you just what they're all about. We are uh, on our way back from Moab. And I thought, well, let's talk about the swag a little bit. Now, the thing that I've noticed for me, I'm six foot two, and honestly, the length of this is a bit of a struggle. So there is a larger hybrid model. If you are under six foot two, this would be enough. The thing with the swag is it's super comfortable. It's really warm. The night that I slept in this on the way down, it was negative five degrees Celsius. It was really cold out. And the tent, because there's so little air in it, and we have this thick canvas outer layer, it stayed uh, really warm. It actually surprised me how warm I was. More so actually, it surprised me how cold it was outside when I got out of the tent in the morning. The foam mattress on it, ultra comfortable. I had a really good sleep. The flip side of it is, um, 
I think I need a bigger model, to be honest, just because of how big I am. I'm six foot two and I stretch end to end in this, barely any room. And probably the most challenging part is when I'm laying in here, when you're taking off your, you know, your clothes to go to bed and sleep and put your clothes on in the morning, it's a real struggle. I have almost no room. I can't sit up in here. You pretty much have to open this door. If you're in a really warm climate and doing that, it's probably not a big deal. Just pop this open in the morning, throw your uh, sweatshirt or t-shirt on, no big deal. But when it's freezing cold out, you have to get some layers on before you get outside. So, so I'm a bit of a mixed opinion on whether this is a good fit for me. The uh, crash pad swag is Everything on this is really well built, really good quality, and I think it has some really good use case scenarios. Um, but I think I need a larger one for me personally to use. I think what's important is knowing your use case, what you use it for, and uh, what's good for you. And if you're smaller, this, uh, this size swag will have tons of room in it for you. As well, if you have a truck instead of a Wrangler, you'll have potentially a larger cargo area to store this. So I just wanted to give you guys some feedback but I really do like the idea because this is far more comfortable sleeping in than a ground tent with the foam mattress that it has underneath of me. Let's get back to the video and there's my thoughts on using swags. All right, the last bit we needed to install today are some rear fender liners. We really only need one, but uh, this one is missing. It's been missing for over a year. So I figure it's time, time to uh, get it back in there. And once the fender figures out how it goes. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. All right, guys, we uh, have the Jeep ready to go. We're gonna go hit Moab next week, but we've got some sliders on here looking good. The metal cloak flip step sliders uh, looking great on here. I really like the versatility, but we're gonna keep them in the up flat position. I think this works pretty good for a step. And we've got all the undercloak armor under here. This is, this is the big stuff and this will Definitely help protect the undercarriage of the Jeep. Really thick steel, nice hardware under here. Prevents it from getting mashed and mangled as you go over rocks. Really great. So, awesome to get this on. And we're gonna head out to Easter Jeep Safari, head down to Moab. If you've been watching the videos and you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and go check out Epic Adventure Outfitters on Instagram and YouTube and epic-4wd.com. And I'll put some links to everything down in the description below. We'll see you guys next week in the next video.